In this video, we are going to discuss another very important part of C sharp programming that is properties. As in the previous video, we have already separated the different code in the different classes. Now, by the time I will start doing that, the external class can access your data members if you will make them public or internal and can put any value into that. But what if you want to validate the incoming values in your data member? We can use property in that particular situation. As property here will provide the restricted access for the data members to the external classes. Let's take an example. If I want to take a class called accounts in which I have some interest rate or initial amount like things. I want to create the initial amount as float in which user can enter any amount, maybe negative as well but I want like only positive values and that must be greater than any particular number like 1000 can be accepted but if you will enter anything less than 1000 that must not be taken. So we can put such validations by using the properties as properties are also a class member which will have get a name and uh, we will define them with the set and get accessor for putting the validations. Whenever you will be providing any value to a particular data member at that time the set accessor will be in action and while the, by the time you will be retrieving the value the get accessor will be in action. So while assigning you can put some logical implementation here in set so that only the required value should be taken and if the value is not valid or we are not supposed to take such values we will reject that value. So let's see it practically how can we implement the properties here. So in this example of properties you can see like I have created a class called accounts inside which I have created a couple of data members of float type called init amount that is initial amount and interest that is interest rate. Both are of float types and since the interest rate will be common for all it is static while this is non-static that simply means like initial amount can vary for different users and you can see like this initial amount is private this data member is private so that it will not be able to access outside this class and that's what I want because this data member is unable to filter the incoming values so I will do that through this property which is having a couple of accessors called set and get as discussed while assigning the value the set accessor will be invoked implicitly while retrieving the value the get accessor will be in action. So as soon as you will assign any value to this initial amount the set accessor will be called and whatever value you are assigning will come to this value automatically. So if that particular value is less than 1000 I don't want that. So I will simply print a message called initial amount cannot be less than 1000 and return. That means I terminated it and I didn't accept the value. What generally we do, we throw the exception. But for now, we don't have any idea about exception. So we will talk about this later. And if you will not assign the value less than 1000, that particular value will be assigned to this init amount because properties cannot store the value right inside but they need some data member to hold the value. Properties will be used for filtering the data and while retrieving you can see there is a get accessor which will return the value of this data member. Similarly while working with the interest rate I have created a static float property for interest rate where you can see I have created a set and get Basically, if I will remove this set, so this is what we call the read only property. That means you are not able to modify the value, but you can just read the value which is being set. Or you can pass a set accessor along with this private access specifier, which will not allow any external class to assign any value to this interest rate. That means we can only do it internally. And here, I have a static constructor which is actually assigning the value in this interest rate 
to 9.5 and a couple of more constructors which will initialize the value of initial amount right here default value is I said 10,000 and if you want to pass anything I'm passing that amount through the parameterized constructor but ultimately the value will come through this initial amount property where we have passed the filters in the set accessor now let's create another class called program inside which I'll have a main method and right here inside I will create the accounts class instance let's say ac1 is equal to new accounts and here inside if I will pass any value to this initial amount let's say 500 let's see what happens so as the message I have sent from the set accessor initial amount cannot be less than 1000 and it terminated the program but if I will enter something greater than 1000 it will accept it and will not give any message if you will not assign anything there is a default constructor which will pass the particular value or you can do the same thing from here as well because I do have one parameterized constructor now let's talk about the static member that is interest rate if I want to assign any value right here like I can access the interest rate because it's a public property but if I will try to modify the value I will get an error message stating property or indexer interest rate cannot be used to the context because the set accessor is inaccessible because the set accessor is private it is not accessible outside the class and since you cannot assign any value from external environment but you can definitely read the value anytime you want like initial amount and accounts dot interest rate so as you can see I can access both the values right like that in case you want to create a property in which you don't want to put any restriction you can also choose the auto implemented property for which you can simply mention the data type which you want to specify and the name of the property let's say name suppose I don't want to specify any validations right here but now in standard C sharp programming properties are the standard way to provide a value outside the class so for that I require a property but here by the help of this auto implemented property you see I don't have to define the set and get logics right here rather I can just simply access it anywhere outside this class alright so this is how you can start working with the properties and can specify the required validations you want to pass